Hi, I'm Becky Nunn with Nunn Design, and this is a line of findings that we've developed called Patera Jury Findings. Patera is Latin for ornamental amulet. These pateras are lead-free pewter and are designed by us at Nunn Design and are cast in the United States. We cast them and then plate them, creating these high-end jury findings that are affordable and easy to use. Here's some different things that you can do with the patera findings. Resin, polymer clay, photographs, collage sheets to make pendants, rings, or bracelets. In this segment, we're going to be making collage jewelry using non design collage sheets and filling them with the diamond glaze and the DG3. We have four different styles of collage sheets that you can choose from. Paris, Collage Birds, Bathing Beauty, and Birds and Butterflies. We've designed the collage sheets to fit with the McGill punches that we distribute. We have a line of seven different punches you can choose from, and these punches punch out the perfect circle, the perfect oval, perfect heart, and it drops into the patera finding very snugly, giving a very professional look. We're going to take our collage sheet and we're going to slide it inside of the punch, lining it up just perfectly inside of there. And then using pressure on both sides, we're going to press down and punch the image. Over time, the punch will start to get dull on the inside, and sometimes it'll get gummed up inside there if you add adhesive on your piece. And you can use a cleaner to clean out the inside, and a sharpener to keep the blade sharp. You can use any image inside of the pateras, whether it be a photograph, inkjet, laser jet, scrapbooking paper, newspaper clipping. Whatever you want to use is great as long as you seal it to prevent the inks from running. You can use the Ultra Seal, which is a silicon base, or a matte medium such as Golden to seal the image. I'm going to take my image, I'm going to turn it over and making sure I have a nice clean surface to work on. I'm going to turn it over and start to seal the back side with my medium by brushing it on and making sure that all of the edges are coated so that none of the diamond glaze or DG3 that we're going to be using will seep into the sides and discolor it. This is also going to help it be like a little bit of a laminate in the, in the base of the patera. So once I have my image all the way coated, I'm going to take my little skewer and pop it up off the sheet and over. And so now I've created like a little glue for the back and I'm going to place it inside of the patera. I place it on the front of the patera and burnish it down on all edges, making sure that all the air bubbles are out and that the patera is secure inside of the setting. I like to go back in with my little skewer and make sure that all of the edges are secure and that all the excess glue is off of the edges. Then I take my medium and go over the top again, making sure that my image is fully protected. It's important to take your time during these steps because this is a major part of the success of the piece. Once our sealant is dry, we're going to go ahead and use the diamond glaze over the top of the image in the patera, giving it a nice, glossy, finished look. Now I like to start my glaze, in this case the diamond glaze, on the side first, making sure that it's flowing out smoothly and that there's no air bubbles. Now I'm going to start it in the middle and squeeze nice and consistently. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush, which I washed off my sealant while it was drying, and I'm going to press it around inside of the patera, bring it all the way over to the edges, 
If you notice, it's a little cloudy as you first put it inside, but don't worry because it'll dry clear. The diamond glaze works great on the thinner pateras, and for the thicker pateras, the deeper pateras, we recommend the DG3, which I'll show you next. On the deeper pateras, we recommend the DG3. And again, I'll start the flow on the side to make sure that there's not any air bubbles before I press it inside and squeeze, filling it all the way up to the top. Now I was really careful and I started my DG3 on the side. You can see I have an air bubble right here and I don't have any inside. But I'll just make sure that all of the glaze is in there and that there's not any air bubbles. If there were some air bubbles, what I would do is I would slide them over to the edge with my little skewer or with a pin. The one I'm holding is dry now, and you can see it has a little bit of a concave look. So we can go ahead and put another hit of the diamond glaze over the top of the dry one. Again, I'm gonna take it over to the side and start it flowing so that there's not any air bubbles coming out. And bring it right and slowly squeeze the DG3 right into the patera again. And this is gonna help it have a more domed look. Drying time will depend on humidity in your location. And what I like to do is take a little glass dish and place it over the patera to prevent them from getting any dust on them while they cure. Once the images have dried and the diamond glaze and the DG3 is cured, you can make them into these fabulous little pieces of jewelry using the Nun Design connector bars and chains. These are the samples that we did with the diamond glaze and the sample that we used with the DG3. Have fun creating!